Filming live from the firehouse, it's Good Night with Christopher Blue. With guest, David Queasel. I am your co-host, Reverb, that can't say anything. Here's your host, Christopher Blue. Hello and welcome to Good Night with Christopher Blue. I'm Christopher Blue and we have a wonderful show for you tonight. Tonight, we have an interview with a puppeteer who's doing his own interesting things. But before we get to that, I'd like to thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to ring that bell so you can notify whenever we upload new content. When we come back, David Queasel. <laughs> oh, hello there. I just wanted to thank you for continuing to support the show. Ah, what, what's this? You, you feel like you could do more? <laughs> Let me tell you how. You can go to our Patreon, the link is in the description, and you can subscribe to any of our memberships. Why, we, we have memberships that allow you to see extra content. We have memberships that allow you to have your name at, at the end of every episode. <laughs> uh, all while you get to support the show and, and help us to grow. Uh. It warms my heart to know that you are out there supporting us while we are hard at work to entertain you. So, join the Patreon if you haven't already, and uh, I'm going to get back to my jokes. Welcome back. Uh, our next guest is a really fun guy with lots of furry fuzzy friends. Um, <laughs> we're interviewing another puppeteer because, you know what? I I like puppets. I do. I wish I was a puppeteer. <laughs> so, out of studio, Chris, take it away. Thank you, Chris. I am here with a guest whose name I can pronounce, but we don't want to risk me butchering it. So, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Uh, hello, my name is David Queasel. Queasel? Yes, I would have, Weasel. I would have definitely butchered that. <laughs> uh, David, I see that you have a bunch of puppets in the background. Yes, sir. So, I'm guessing you're a puppeteer. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am. At least I uh, think I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I invited you onto the show uh, because you do something kind of special. Um, not only are you a self-taught puppeteer, um, but you decided to use that gift to create something bigger. Uh, would you like to tell us more well, about that? I mean, yeah, I've just, uh, I, I have high functioning autism and, uh, ever since for as long as I can remember, grew up being a diehard Muppets fan. And, um, basically as I watched Muppets and puppets on TV, that was the one primary thing that always intrigued me. And, you know, kids like to mimic what they see on TV. I saw puppets moving on TV. So I would try to imitate that with my own puppets or stuffed animals at home and then what do you know that's kind of how I self-taught myself next thing I know uh people were asking people asked me hey you think you could do a puppet show at this event and I'm like uh, maybe because I was always just doing it for fun I was never actually doing it for money or anything like that but it's like oh, I'll try it and I put together my first little pilot episode puppet show in December of 2005 and my puppet acts the Queasel Puppet Troop just uh took off and grew and grew and grew from there so and here I am that's awesome. So, uh, state state your your puppet troop for me one oh, more time. It's just simply called the Queasel Puppet Troop. The In Queasel fact, Puppet Troop. I'm wearing some merch that my wife made, actually. <laughs> oh, I love that. You'll notice I took the D and the Q, my initials, and created this DQ emblem, and I put the word Squeezel Puppet Troop in there. I did that just for kicks on my computer, and then my wife took that image and some of my favorite puppets and made the shirt as a Father's Day present for me. That's awesome. So... Uh, the Queasel Puppet Troop, yes. um, that is, uh, the, the branding that you use when you travel and do shows. Right. Um, so what do you, what's like your mission with, with doing these shows? Do you, do you target like specific, um, groups or are you more of a charity group? Like, well, I mean, I, I do have a real job, which is how I pay my bills. I just, I don't charge very much for my live puppet shows because I know money is tricky and difficult. So I, I charge an amount that makes it worth taking a day off of my real job, but not a huge amount. And I just, I try to, my, my main goal is pretty much kind of like the goals that the Muppets usually do, which is ultimately to make people happy. I don't really try to deliver 
too specific of a message, but I do try to maybe implement positive messages in there. You know, it's like nothing major. It's not like I'm trying to be some sort of activist. I'm just trying to make people happy, really. And I think I strive to do that, you know. Uh, and you might notice I do have a very large variety of characters. This is just one wall behind me. I've actually got another lot here, another shelf over there. It's, <laughs> it's currently 138 different puppets, all because, wow. one, because I have a tendency to like, ooh, that one's cool. That gives me ideas. And then I, but now that I have so many, I've been fortunate enough to uh, uh, be able to uh, use different characters and uh, match different clients' requests, such as, uh, for example, a couple of years ago, I had a birthday party show for a boy whose favorite colors were red and gold. So I was able to get 10 puppets together, four of them red and six of them brownish, goldish colored. And so I'm like, yeah, I was able to assemble a show of my same style, but a little more customized just for them. So different colors to match favorite colors or different animals, different creatures, different vibes. I, I'm not a Harry Potter expert, but somebody was doing a Harry Potter themed show. So I'm like, hmm, what can I do here? All right, I'll put a cape on a character and have him try to do a magic act. And I try to do a little bit with a novelty top hat. And so, so I try to, I do a variety of things, but ultimately the goal is just make people happy, you know, just make them smile, just take them away from their troubles for a little while if I can, you know? Yeah. It sounds like you have to be really creative when coming up with, with a, a show for someone. Yes. I mean, it helps that I watch a lot of the same stuff that I like over and over again. That's kind of part of being autistic is that if I like something, I like it enough. I got to watch it or do it again. So people might have a favorite song that they listen to more than once. I could have entire movies or TV shows that I'll watch over and over and over again. And that includes <laughs> a lot of the Muppet content. So I learn and retain the jokes that they told. And then I will sort of uh, pick up on that. So of course the Muppets and other people really good at telling double meeting jokes, you know? So it's, so I could very easily pull off a pun very quickly, depending on what puppet I've got, you know, or, or if I'm around something that's got, double meaning I could pull off a joke and make people laugh very sometimes my funniest material is when I'm just improvising and not doing my rehearsed material but it's fun if I can mix the mix them together you know <laughs> yeah for sure mm -hmm. uh, what would you say is is your favorite puppet with with what you have around if I had a favorite I probably wouldn't have so many <laughs> but I can tell you well let's see um, I've got um, I do have um, well I don't necessarily have favorites I do have ones that may have or may not have some more sentimental value just because like a lot of the guys on my shirt, for example, are ones that maybe the closest to favorites. Um, like, uh, yeah, let me get an example here. Yeah. So my very, 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 my eldest puppet who I, is uh, Bernie the bird right here. Hi. Yeah. Now this, believe it or not, was a 1995 Walmart purchase, but wow. I've taken very good care of him. He was part of my original show. So he's kind of like my Kermit the frog in a way because he was my first, my eldest character. And he's, yeah, he's still in pretty decent shape, but if I move my camera over here just a second, like, you'll see over here is a shelf rack of 17 more bird puppets of this style. Wow. Because they are very inexpensive, easy to find, and yeah, it's just like, oh, I stumble onto another one online or whatever. So, so there's that. So, there's Bernie. Uh, meanwhile, um, on this other rack over here, you'll notice... Uh, Puppets from the late FAO Schwartz Muppet Whatnot workshop that was around for a few years back. You might remember that. So the blue one right there, that's an alter ego of mine named Davis Lasique. Davis, David, Lasique is Quiesel spelled backwards. So there's that. Um, meanwhile, uh, there's another puppet company called Folk Manus, which I have invested in puppets from that company for years. And they happen to have a humanoid right here that I used to dye my hair blonde like this. So Leo Livingston here is another avatar of mine because Leo is my star sign and Livingston is my middle name. So there's that connection there. Uh, and then something that happened during the pandemic. A friend of mine does custom puppet jobs. He can uh, make puppets or even help make uh, modifications to puppets if I need be. But when the pandemic happened, I asked him, hey, you know what? I've My last name rhymes with weasel, but I don't have a weasel. How easy or hard would it be for you to make me a weasel? Meet Q the Weasel. Hey, what's up? <laughs> wow, I'm good at you. Yes, we are. <laughs> cool. Hi. <laughs> so he's got a face almost as expressive as Kermit the Frog. Not quite, but you know, so people really enjoy him for his expressiveness. So yeah, there's just a, so I've got some. Everybody is kind of like a like most puppets performers. You know, everybody's a little aspect of my personality uh, magnified. But the ones I've named off are a little extra special because of their. Uh, 
their symbolic value or whatever like that. So, yeah. Yeah. well, it, it was interesting. You were showing off uh, Q there, mm -hmm. and it, it almost sounded like he was inspired a little bit by Rizzo the Rat again, coming back to uh, to Muppets. Oh. Maybe a little bit. I mean, obviously, people have mistaken him for a rat or a mouse with his design. But I'm like, no, I'm just a weasel. You know, it's like, do I have character voices that sound a little bit like Steve Whitmire's? Maybe it's not on purpose. <laughs> it just kind of is. You know, just I've certainly watched and enjoyed Steve Whitmire's work over the years. You know, it's can't love to meet him at a comic con one day. Just haven't yet. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah R but... Rizzo is definitely one of those uh, those characters where where his jokes always land. Oh um, yeah, him, him and Pepe are a great duo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Him and Gonzo are a great duo, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Actually, listen, one of my friends actually shared with me a video on TikTok just this morning of, uh, I guess, some Muppet performers were at a San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con or whatever, and uh, for whatever reason, Dave Goles took Gonzo, made Gonzo put his finger in Pepe's mouth, and Pepe was a <laughs> like that. That was funny enough, but then Rizzo, played by Steve Whitmire, was like, huh, that's an old gag. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the kind of stuff I would have told. That's the kind of joke I would have told if something like that happened. So, <laughs> relevant to the situation. So, where where do you plan on um, taking uh, your your puppet troupe? Like, what 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 are your goals for the future? Well, for right now, if because you know I have my real job, I also have a wife and a son. I'm very busy and very tired most of the time. <laughs> so, for right now, the puppets, my puppet act, are ultimately just my main actually what they've been for years all these years is a, a means of uh, maintaining my own personal mental sanity you know it's uh it's uh there's a lot of them and not all of them are cheap but even their combined total price on how much money i've spent all these guys probably still cheaper than going to therapy yeah <laughs> so and you know even during the pandemic thank heavens I did not have to be socially distant from them during the, 20, the year of 2020. That would have sucked. <laughs> so, but no, I got it's just like I just kind of go with the flow. Really, it's just like any chance I can get to use or apply my puppets, even if it's something as like 15 spare seconds in the middle of the day to it's like, oh, I've only got this one minute of free time. What am I going to do? Get one fun photograph of a puppet outdoors or doing anything or even just a selfie. If I'm in the mood to take a picture, you know, the, then uh, then just, you know, go with it. And, and so. Yeah, for sure. They're 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 my own personal means of mental sanity. But the beauty of the internet is that I could do something just to entertain me. Most of the stuff I put online is mainly for my own personal entertainment and amusement and mental st stability. <laughs> but thankfully, the internet allows others to see my stuff, and if they like it, great. If they don't, well, all right, maybe I'll get a little bit of input from them. But uh, and I have taken some input and some critiquing along the way and i have slowly but gradually uh slowly but surely uh evolved over time you know from yeah yeah so it's it's a long long journey i could very easily be like oh yeah i went to this to this to this and then started doing that and blah 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 blah, blah. it's like you know like i've got all these fao schwartz mother whatnots right now but i used to have a policy of like if i have a new puppet it's got to have legs because i don't always <laughs> work on the stage i didn't always work on the stage back then so it's like well you know if people are going to see their legs let's have puppets with legs but obviously i branched out and broke that rule and you know what it's okay so i've now got a stage and other technological advancements you know so it's so bring it back to uh to how you are self-taught yes. um what advice would you give to someone who's wanting to get into puppetry and and maybe teach themselves well i mean uh like i've already shared i was just doing stuff for fun like i was watching Muppet movies or whatever on TV and I was just I had a puppet on my hand or or even just a stuffed animal you know it's like anything and just figured out how to move it myself like um, and then just to just have fun just play and experiment don't feel like you're racing against the clock to do it just have fun with it and just do whatever you want to do like and then just go from there really it's just but I just 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 make it fun try to make it fun if you can like if you have a favorite Muppet movie or a favorite anything that's got puppets in it or even it could be something that doesn't have puppets in it. Just like, uh, I guess something I did when I was young is while I was watching a Muppet movie on the TV, I would have a puppet or whatever with me and I would just stand in front of the TV and hold that puppet up to the TV screen and try to make it look like that character that I had with me was part of the journey unfolding. And uh, that's cool. You know, so, so you could, so maybe people could try experimenting doing that, you know, try to, or, or you don't even have to sit in front of the TV. You can just be like watching the TV and having your guy with you and just imagine how would he be a part of that if he were a part of that. Even being background characters. Like you've seen Muppet movies where you see characters in the background doing stuff like 
there's 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 some stuff going on there. You could like hone your skills just by being a miscellaneous background character. You know, just just yeah. I love that. I hope uh, I can answer that question well. <laughs> no, it's great. Okay. Uh, so finally, where could people uh, go to to keep up with with what you're doing? Well, I've got uh, my Facebook page, which I don't have necessarily a Quizzle puppetry page. My 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 main Facebook profile is primarily my puppets page right now, so it's not you know you, you, whether people don't have to add me as a friend, they can just simply click a follow button and then they'll see the puppet pictures and videos that I post all the time on there. So that's just my name, David Quizzel, Q U E S A L is how it's spelled. So that's Facebook. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok, and to find me on there, it's I spell it out D A V Q U E E Z as in zebra A L L. Kind of like how I would spell it if I wanted people to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> so look, type those in on Instagram and TikTok, and you'll find me on there. And then my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Queasel, is where you can see YouTube videos that I've been making ever since 2007. <laughs> awesome. We'll make sure all those links are in the description of this video, so what? it'll be just a click away. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, David, thank you so much for, for coming on. Um, it was, it was a pleasure me. speaking with you. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Uh, we take it back to me in the studio. <laughs> I bring to the studio. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> That's our show. Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to click that bell so you get notified whenever we upload new content. Until next time, good night, my sweet baby angels. I'll see you in the future. <laughs> <laughs>